Well, here we go again. Another year has passed and there's been some awesome discoveries in Australian paleontology. So let's check them out. Okay, so we kick off the year with a new study published on the 8th of January, which provided new evidence that giant short-faced kangaroos strided around like humans instead of hopping like modern kangaroos. Short-faced kangaroos lived in Australia from 12 and a half million to 30,000 years ago, from the Miocene to the Pleistocene Epoch. So, how do they move around? Well, the researchers compared the foot and leg bones of three short-faced kangaroos and three long-faced kangaroos, a group which includes all modern kangaroos. The evidence they found against short-faced kangaroos hopping was that their heel bones were shown to have less of the hard outer bone, called cortical bone, need to be resistant to the rotational forces from hopping. The evidence they found in favour of bipedal striding was that their leg bones have medial strengthening and their toe bones had higher resistance to bending. Clearly, the leg and toe bones were capable of supporting their entire weight on one foot at a time, allowing short-faced kangaroos to stride across the Australian landscape. Oh boy, was I excited about this next discovery. On the 10th of February, 2022, a new paper revealed a non-avian dinosaur preserved inside the stomach of a crocodile. The new crocodile species from central Queensland is called Confractosuchus sorictonus. Its 30 centimetre long skull is near complete, while its skeleton is 35% complete. The baby dinosaur itself is the first ornithopod to be discovered from the Winton formation, however it remains undescribed. Both animals lived on the floodplains of the Winton region 93 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. Confractosuchus died shortly after consuming its meal, which remained largely undigested in its stomach. In addition to tooth marks found on dinosaur bones and eggs around the world, this world first discovery is definitive evidence that crocodiles ate dinosaurs for breakfast. Okay, published on the 14th of April was Australia's first juvenile sauropod. The dinosaur's juvenile traits include unfused back vertebrae and little to no muscle attachment areas on bones such as the shoulder blade. For now, it has been allocated to a species of titanosaur called Diamantinosaurus matildae. In fact, it was the third specimen to be described from the Winton formation of central Queensland. So the researchers compared the two adults and one juvenile and found that as Diamantinosaurus grew up, the long bones of its legs became more robust and grew at a faster rate than other parts of its body. This has been observed to varying degrees in juvenile titanosaur specimens around the world, and it does seem to be the dominant growth style. Hopefully, more juvenile sauropods are discovered from Australia so we can learn more about their childhood 95 million years ago. So, it seems that vultures used to live in Australia. The discovery came from a study published on the 20th of July. Basically, the researchers reclassified a previously described species of eagle by comparing the physical characteristics of its bones to those of extinct and modern birds. They found that its right upper arm bone, the humerus, had the most similar traits to that of old world vultures living today. Its humerus and lower leg bone, the tarsa metatarsus, also had enough distinct traits for it to be named a new genus, Cryptogyps. Its fossil bones have been found in South and Western Australia, as well as New South Wales, which meant that it lived all over Australia during the late Pleistocene Epoch. So, since 500,000 years ago, it likely scavenged on the carcasses of Australian megafauna, which meant that when they went extinct around 50,000 years ago, Sadly, survival became impossible for the Australian vulture. Another world record for Australia is the oldest fossil heart. This amazing discovery was revealed in a new study published on the 15th of September. This fossil heart comes from a specimen of Arthrodia placoderm fish found in the Gogo Formation of Western Australia. This fossil fish is 380 million years old, which means it lived in the Devonian period back when the Kimberley region was an extensive reef system. The researchers identified the heart when the fish was examined using microtomography. They noticed an asymmetrical structure in the back of the space where the pharynx would have been. It looked like a heart because it had two chambers, an outflow tract, and an arrangement that was S-shaped. 
The heart is also where you'd expect the heart to be in a placoderm fish. The median ventral aorta also fans out from the heart and contains intact blood vessels. This well-developed heart would have allowed the placoderm fish to swim quickly in pursuit of its prey. Finally, in December of 2022, the fossil of Australia's first ever complete plesiosaur was unearthed. The six metre long specimen was discovered in central Queensland and excavated by a four person team from the Queensland Museum. This is the first time in Australia that both the head and body of a plesiosaur have been found together in one place. Even by global standards, it's pretty rare to find the heads of plesiosaurs as they were often the first to either uh, float away from the corpse or be eaten by a predator. This specimen is a type of plesiosaur called an elasmosaur that hunted fish in the Aramanga Sea around 100 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. For now, the specimen has been transported safely to the Museum of Tropical Queensland in Townsville. So here's hoping a research paper about this bad boy gets published in 2023. Thank you to our patrons, Tom Capitani and Kim Daniels. Thank you to the Prehistoric Australia production team for all the videos you've helped me produce this year. And thank you, dear viewers. These videos really are all for you. Have a fantastic new year, folks, and we'll see you again soon.